Hello, it's Scott Manley here on San Francisco's waterfront again because we've had some serious, amazing breaking news. This morning at 8 a.m., uh, the White Knight 2 carrier aircraft dropped the VSS Unity rocket plane and then a rocket plane then proceeded to light its hybrid rocket engine and accelerated into a vertical climb, reaching a peak speed of about 2 point, Mach 2.9, which isn't that fast, but it was a vertical climb, so there is that. From that point, it proceeded on a ballistic trajectory, carrying it to an altitude of 82.7 kilometers, which by some standards makes it the first crewed space flight to fly from US soil since the space shuttle was retired. So this is big news. Uh, the astronauts, the pilots, uh, CJ Sturko and Mark Forger, I believe they are gonna get commercial astronaut wings for this endeavor. Um, and of course, this is the sign that Virgin is, is finally really getting its act together, getting its spacecraft flying, and will be able to carry passengers in the coming year. Now, of course, they're still testing, right? This was not a full duration burn. This rocket plane will eventually be able to go above 100 kilometers when it does its full burn. That's what it was designed to do, and of course, do carrying passengers. The argument for you know 80 plus kilometers being the altitude at the edge of space. There's a couple of things behind this and I did actually a video earlier this year standing on top of a mountaintop where I tried to explain why some people were wanting to lower the altitude. First of all in the 1960s when the US Air Force was giving out astronaut wings they uh, were giving them to at pilots that crossed 50 miles as a mark and that's about 80 something kilometers. The 100 kilometers came along kind of at a later date and uh, there's actually a physical argument that is related to observations of how satellite orbits decay. Now, satellites, as they get lower and lower in the atmosphere, they get they experience drag, they slow down, and they eventually fall back to Earth. But if you're on an eccentric orbit, it's quite common to see satellites, say, that are returning from geostationary orbits, uh, you know, geostationary uh, injection burns. They will dip into the atmosphere and then slow down a bit and then go back out into space. And it's quite common that they will dip down below 100 kilometers, but above about 80, and make several orbits in this. So it becomes inconvenient to then say this spacecraft is in space when it's above 100, and then not in space for a few minutes, and then goes back into space and back and forth. But spacecraft that fall below about 80 kilometers, they basically decay much more rapidly. So. It's a pretty strong argument to say that 80 kilometers is a more reasonable altitude for the edge of space. That being said, I'm, you know, I'm prepared to give you your 100 kilometer Kármán line. Just understand that, you know, you can only put this off for a little while because VSS Unity is almost certainly going to fly above 100 kilometers in coming months, weeks, whatever. This was. Um, Richard Branson kind of surprised everyone by say, in a, saying in a news interview that they were going to fly people to space before Christmas. And it's space by some definition that happens to fit marketing. Of course, you know, this is not related to Virgin Orbit, which is also doing test flights with their launcher hardware. Um, Cosmic Girl has, has been doing a lot of captive flights with the rocket on board, but I'm not sure when they will actually be launching that. Uh, you know, by some standards, the energy taken to get into a suborbital trajectory and fly above 100 kilometers is about 3% of the energy required to get into orbit. But that, that's a bit of a misnomer because really it's the velocity that matters, it's the delta V. And if you figure out in terms of delta V, it takes about five times as much delta V to get into Earth orbit as compared to getting into a 100 kilometer suborbital trajectory. So, you know, regardless, it's a very exciting time to watch this. And of course, you know, looking forward to proper rocket flights in the coming year. We've got Dragon is very much looking like uh, they will have their Dragon 2 test flight in January. Of course, uh, they're still dropping hints that this date might shift uh, for various reasons. Not really sure. Um, also, for space flight watchers, there was a really interesting test yesterday of an RS-25 engine. It was put on the test stand and proceeded to fire, and then flames started shooting out the sides of the, the top of it. So uh, <laughs> that's an interesting video that I'm obviously putting up here. 
I'm thinking that most likely it was related to ground service equipment, the like that is the pipes feeding into it, simply because the engines we've seen in the past shut down pretty quickly, whereas this one was running with burning fuel spouting out the side for a while. So I'm thinking the shutdown criteria were not inside the engine, more likely to be related to the test stand, but we will, we will find out. Still, it's a cool bit of video. Anyway, congratulations to Virgin for your historic flight. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.